what are the main things that I see coming to my office? So we got the belly fat, we got the insomnia, we have the allergies, uh, we have the high blood pressure too. Anybody here, here have anybody with high blood pressure, hypotension or hypertension? Hyper means too much blood pressure. Okay, that's an adrenal effect on the kidneys, which raise blood pressure. So when we start realizing, wow, maybe I'm on blood pressure meds, insomnia meds, and I'm uh, starving myself and trying to exercise more, and all that's maybe related to my adrenal system, you know, not all those problems um, that you thought. So where are the adrenal glands located? Anybody know? Anybody know? On top of your kidneys. On top of your kidneys. We have two of them, okay? Their job is to deal with stress. Okay. Anybody here hear a fight or flight response? So when a body gets stressed, you either have to fight or you got to flight, which is run. So when our body gets stressed, the adrenals, what they will do is take blood away from your gut and your immune system and they send it to your skeletal muscle. Okay, so an example, you're camping, you're in your tent, and all of a sudden a bear is outside of your tent. Do you need to fight or flight? Absolutely. I mean, I know you're supposed to play dead for a bear, but humor me, or I, I wouldn't do that, I would run, trust me. So what we do when we need to fight or flight is our brain sends all our blood and our glucose and our minerals to our skeletal muscle so we could be really, really strong. And you guys hear about adrenaline and things like that, you know what that is? You hear about those traumatic situations where moms pick cars off their children and things like that, superhuman kind of strength. That is real, that can happen through adrenaline. The problem is that is supposed to be very short-lived. Once you get away from the bear, then you calm back down and you go back to normal life. But because of all those stresses we talked about in the beginning, our bodies are all stressed out all the time. You know, so somebody gets up, alarm goes off, you're tired, okay? It goes off four or five times, snooze, 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 finally you get up. What do you need to get going every day? Caffeine. It makes the adrenals go into that fight or flight mode. And then, you know, we rush to work and we have all our daily life stuff, which we already talked about, right? All those stresses. The air, the water, the food, the boss, the employees, the spouse, the person sitting next to you in the chair right now, all those things. So we get all stressed out. So then what do we need to do to go to sleep at night? Sleeping pill, a couple glasses of red wine. So the problem is that all of that scenario is usually a real stressed out adrenal system, okay? So that's why we talk about that. And uh, if you have those symptoms, you know, just kind of make a mental checklist of that. Second body type, and you guys, this is interactive, so if you have a question, just ask me, raise your hand. You don't have to worry about interrupting me. The thyroid body, evenly distributed weight gain and weight loss. So who, who here, when you gain weight, you gain in your earlobes, your toes, your calves, your arms, and when you lose it, you lose it like that too. That's gonna be your thyroid. Most people have thyroid dysfunction, but a lot of them don't have the body distortion, but what we do have is cold hands, cold feet. Who's got the cold hands, cold feet all the time? Anybody? I know you do, because you're tucking your hands in yeah. to keep them warm. Even on a hot day, you're like, why are my hands cold, you know? Uh, vertical ridges on your fingernails. Look at your fingernails. Do you have ridges that run up and down? Okay. The hair will thin or dry out. For, for men, we thin and lose it. This is stress-induced hair loss. It's not genetic. Nobody on either side of my family, generations back, had that happen. Um, it doesn't curl the way it used to. The hair gets drier and doesn't curl. Um, depression, brain fog. Anybody here know what brain fog is? For those of you who have never experienced it, I will explain. Here, well, here's a good example. The other day, uh, and this happens to me at least once a month, I'll call somebody and then the phone starts ringing and then I have this sheer panic because I don't know who I'm calling. Has that ever happened to everybody? Or you're looking for your sunglasses and where are they? Looking for your keys. Who's looking for their keys when they're in their hand? Okay, that's called brain fog. Yeah, see, somebody's pointing fingers out down there. So that's called brain fog. Um, craving for sweet carbohydrate. Who here likes the cookies, crackers, cereals, breads, those kind of things? That's typically going to be a thyroid body, whereas the uh, chocolate or dark chocolate craving is going to be more the adrenal body. Who here craves them both? Yeah. There's a reason for that, too. Uh, as far as the thyroid goes, some other little quirks we see, but high we, cholesterol. Yes, sir. Just to ask you about that, now, dark chocolate, if it has low sugar and things like that, isn't that supposed to be helpful or any of these things to a point? The, the answer is always yes and no. Okay. Depends on the person. Oh, I you know? So low sugar is better than lots of sugar, but you still said sugar. For some people, that's not going to be good. For others, depending on, you know, when you say chocolate, that's a pretty broad spectrum, right? You have 
Hershey's synthetic milk chocolate stuff, and then you have like organic, you know, real I dark. I get this lint, but I, but told, someone told me about the nibs, I guess. Yeah. I tried that once. That was it for that. It yeah, <laughs> was too yeah. bitter. What I tell people is the answer always could be yes and no on certain things. You know, okay. now if you try to convince me trans fats, yellow number four, blue lake number 40, <laughs> that there's a good and a bad to that, no. I mean, those are just absolutely bad things in our diet. But an organic dark chocolate sometimes could be good, sometimes could be bad. Just like wine. Who here wants to know, you know, I'll do whatever he says, but don't take away my red wine, right? It could be good, it could be bad. It all depends on your goal and where you're trying, what you're trying to accomplish, okay? What I tell people is the reason you crave is because of hormones in your brain. Okay? If you crave sweet things, it's because you eat sweet things. If you stop eating sweet things for three days, you will stop craving sweet things. It's really that simple. The problem is a lot of you don't eat any sugar, but you still crave sweet things. Who, who out there has tried to not eat any sugar, and they still crave sugar? Anybody? So what we have to define is what sugar is. Things that are high glycemic. You guys know what glycemic is? It's <coughs> carbohydrates turning to glucose. All carbohydrates will turn to glucose. So what are sources of carbohydrates? You have your low glycemic, your vegetables, dark green leafy things, then you have fruit, and then you have whole grains, then you have refined grains, and then you have alcohol, and then at the very top of that you have things like uh, crackers and cereal, and high fructose corn syrup, and those are the things that are more, th those actually turn to glucose quicker than table sugar will turn to glucose. So when we say sugar, it's one of those things too. Somebody say, well, is honey good for me? Well, I say organic raw honey is a great product, but is it good for you? I don't know. We gotta, we gotta answer or ask more questions first. The ovary body, that's gonna be you ladies. Um, in childbearing years, it will be uh, PMS, um, you know, you, you know all about that kind of stuff. The emotions that go with that, uh, weight gain in the thighs. After menopause, it's usually the hot flashes and uh, heavy bleeding and things like that. And unfortunately, a lot of women in our culture go through this process and the doctors say, well, the problem is your uterus and your ovaries, let's just pull them out, you don't need them. That will fix symptoms, but then you never fix the problem and then you're just gonna get a whole other host of problems in your 60s and 70s. So. Be careful with that kind of stuff. I'm not saying there's not a time and a place for drugs and surgery, but how we handle women's health in our culture is pretty bad, in my opinion. Pretty bad. Uh, we have the liver. Everybody know where your liver is? Right side of the body. Big, large organ, weighs about four pounds, give or take a half a pound. It's about this big. I mean, if you, it's hard to believe that thing fits in there, but it's a, probably about half the side of your, your body here. What the liver does is what? got three functions we want to talk about. Mo about toxins, toxins she said. So here's the thing. Kidneys filter, liver changes things from toxic to non-toxic, okay? And then the kidney gets rid of it. So liver is a detoxification kind of thing. When you drink alcohol, when you breathe di diesel fuel, when you take in those food colorings and trans fats, your liver has to take those from toxic to non-toxic to get them out of your body. Guess where it puts that stuff if it can't get it out of your body? You got it. See these red splotches there? That's where the body likes to store it if you can't get it out of your system. Okay? And uh, that's why the thing called detoxification is important. But we have a detoxification system, it's called our liver. The problem is our liver is really backed up most of the time. And that's why the body distortion will be in the belly. Okay, now the difference between the belly fat from an adrenal and the belly size from a liver, one's toxic fluid and one's fat. Does that make sense? So we want to clearly identify the two. Um, I made sure he wasn't in the store right now, but this guy right here, you guys have seen him before. Anybody ever been on, at the river on the 4th of July? Okay, this guy's running around. He's got really skinny arms and legs and chest. You've seen him. And he's got this huge watermelon belly, and he usually doesn't have any hair, and he's got a Speedo on. And I think his name is Earl. <laughs> and I'll tell you, he's famous. I could never, I could never track him down, but we've, we've spotted him at the beach. And it's because he's full of toxic fluid. Earl's usually carrying a beer, right? He's usually got the little zipper thing around the beer and he's, he's hanging out. But his liver's backing up. So what happens is when your liver backs up, it starts putting fluid in your abdominal cavity and just starts filling up, okay, with fluid. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And the other thing we see with the liver is it starts to affect the right shoulder, okay? Because when your liver gets stressed, it anchors down the tissues so you can't move your shoulder. And so when you're doing this all day long, it starts to inflame. Anybody here have any chronic right shoulder pain? 
That's a, a hallmark. And you'll see a few other symptoms on there. If you brought your magnifying glass, you'll see them anyway. Uh, cravings for fried foods.